Our first guest of 2023 is a multi-talented man who makes movies and ceramics. You can see his new docu-series, which is called Paul T. Goldman, Sundays on Peacock. Please welcome Seth Rogen. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. I feel Good like we might be, be here. we might be becoming the same person. We are slowly. I saw you out there. I was like, he looks. We look a lot. We're we are a pair of glasses away from being the same. <laughs> How you doing? Which is okay. I'm okay with that. How's your break? Did you do anything fun? Did you gather with the family? Yeah, my nephews uh, came to visit me for uh, a nice. week or so. Yeah, young my young nephews. It was good to celebrate the holidays. Very they, nice. they are Jewish. They don't celebrate. Christmas, though, uh -huh. um, <laughs> they don't believe in, in in Santa. That was the thing I was curious about. I was like, you guys, like, I didn't want to ruin it for them if they did, but I was like, you shouldn't. But um, I was like, <laughs> what's your guys' stance on Santa Claus? And my younger nephew is nine, was like, it's bull <laughs> and, uh <laughs> And it's a funny thing, though, actually, because a lot of my friends uh, who uh, are not Jewish have kids, and they've told their kids about Santa Claus, and now their kids are at the age where they're like, I've gotten myself into a lie I don't know how to get myself out of. <laughs> and I'm just like, why did you do this? Yeah. You're like, you, why are, why are we? We got two kids that And are do they believe in Santa Claus? Full on board. And I think part of it is, because our daughter is eight, yeah. I think part of it is she feels like if she, find, if she reveals the truth, she yeah. won't get anything. Oh. So there's a little bit of that going on. It's so strange to me, if I'm being honest. And I guess, yeah. like, because it's a lie you tell your kids that you're going to eventually just have to tell them was a lie the whole time. One of their friends usually tells them, though. Isn't that how it works I out? don't know. I was often the kid who told non-Jewish kids that there was no Santa Claus. <laughs> Is that true? So if, yeah. So that's advice. If you want it ruined for your kids, befriend a Jewish family. <laughs> With a child around the age of your child, and they will ruin it. Yeah, because when, it's funny, because I actually look back, because when I was a kid, I was like very condescending towards the kids who believed in Santa Claus. Uh, I was like, the Santa Claus is, is bull, but the tooth fairy, that it's real. Like, <laughs> and you do not besmirch the name of the tooth fairy. Because that is a real thing and that actually happened. Yeah, but uh yeah. no, I guess, yeah, and I I maybe I don't relate to it because Jewish holidays are not about joy and wonder. They're often about <laughs> Jews getting murdered. And, and, and I think, like, Hanukkah is, Hanukkah is literally about, like, the Greeks murdered the Jews, and they thought they had enough oil to burn for one day of light, and then they had enough oil for eight days of light. That's Hanukkah. <laughs> Seven yeah. more days of oil burning. And, like, Christmas is, like, a guy, it's Jesus' birthday, and right. a magical man gives presents to everyone on the planet. Right. Which is a much better story, yeah, I Yeah, it is. So it's, I, it's more upbeat, for sure. I understand why that narrative caught on more than the more oil burning days yeah, narrative. Yeah, people who misjudged the prevailing the narrative. amount yeah. of oil they had, really. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't fit on a card well. Yeah, like, yeah, no. <laughs> happy oil burning day. Yeah, happy morning. Yeah, it's, not, it's a bleak thing. And again, and it started with the Greeks murdering the Jews. So not exactly. If you're Greek, you are the villain of Hanukkah. Uh, you should know that. You're the bad guy. Maybe that's you, are, you are the Grinch of Hanukkah. The Greek Grinch, yeah. Yes, maybe they could the be Greek, a... That's where the Grinch comes from. It's yeah. from uh, the Greek. Uh, I no, see. I that means <laughs> the word Grinch. That's why they're so hairy. They're means... covered in fur. <laughs> Going to get you long, hairy fingers like the Greeks. Greeks are known for hairy fingers. And if they're really green, you know they're from Greece. That's how you know. It's like, that's a real Greek guy. I didn't know any yeah, of this. Yeah, if their hair is green on their fingers, that's, you, that, they're from Athens. We have so much to learn from you. I didn't realize that. So... You, did you guys give, Does like... Does Greece have an anti-defamation league? They do I, now. I, I, I they do. Not. You'd be surprised. Everyone well, you know has You bring one. it, Greece. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. This would be a funny thing yeah. to get canceled for, wouldn't Greek, it? Greek, yeah, no, yeah. They started it with Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We're even now, We're I think. We're even, yeah. Um, okay, so you had the family... What about when you were... Besides being um, yeah. uh, the kid who... The little, like kid who created a whole bunch of little Kanyes yes. in your neighborhood yeah, exactly. by telling there's no Santa. Um, do, what were your, were the Rogan family traditions? Did you have any? 
Uh, no. We no. had almost no traditions. I don't honestly remember receiving, like, one gift my entire childhood. For real? Yeah, very little. I actually remember I would get gifts from other people, and my parents would take them. And say, like, I, 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 For my bar mitzvah, I got, like, 3000 bucks, and my parents were like, you can spend it when you turn 18. And I turned 18, and I'm like, I'm ready for my money. And they were like, we spent it on a washer and dryer three years ago. <laughs> I remember that from your book. <laughs> you know what else I was thinking about from your book? Is that you were only allowed to eat pears as a child. I was, I, yeah. All the, I, I, I had behavioral <laughs> allergies, which means um, I, I was essentially like an ADHD kid, but they, they and it was true, it was linked to what you eat. And, and any amount of sugar made me go bonkers, except the amount of sugar in pears, which out of all fruit has the least amount of sugar, which is why it's the lamest fruit. <laughs> <laughs> And it has expressions like pear shaped, like that's like about being ugly. Like yeah, that's yeah. like, they, you, it's solely associated with being a bad friend. You know, the Greeks invented pears. They do, and yeah. they're the same color. That's why they're both green. They're green uh, yeah. You, uh, oh, you're, uh, the Golden Globes. Are you going to go to the Golden Globes? I think I'm going to go okay. to the Golden I'm nominated for you're a Golden nominated. Globe. Congratulations. I, it's not an award. It's not, I'm not saying that to get an applaud. Yeah, it's like. Bo it's what not an award I ever took that seriously, because mm -hmm. the last time I was at the Golden Globes, I ate a weed lollipop that was so strong I had to leave. I remember so, that. It's, it's, I don't know if it ever was like a reverential night in my mind. As I recall, and correct me if I have this wrong, you uh, were so out of it that Brian Cranston approached you and yes. said, are you okay? Brian Cranston, who I did not know. At all. <laughs> came up to me, so he doesn't know what I normally look like. <laughs> but he knew I looked up enough that he came up to me <laughs> across the room and, and this said, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I said to my wife, we're going. We're going home. <laughs> and, so what uh, do you have planned for this uh, event? Uh, I would imagine you really want to top that. I'm huh? going to do DMT. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's, is, a, it's a hallucin... I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> that would be fun for the viewers at home watching to know be, that... They'd be like, why is Seth Rogen writhing around on the Fableman's table? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Fableman. That's right. How does that happen that Steven Spielberg calls you? Because I do remember no. there was some weird experience you had with him. Yeah. But then he calls you and says, will you be my uncle? That's literally what happened. I was, uh, I got a call one day that Steven Spielberg wanted uh, to talk to me. And uh, yeah, I assumed it was bad, I guess. Uh -huh. I don't know why. <laughs> Were you really nervous? Uh, that... I was a little nervous. Uh -huh. I, as you, I'm sure you relate to this. We make a lot of jokes <laughs> Every out time here. I think it's gonna and be And I make jokes about people that I forget I make. Right. And I've had famous people come up to me and be like, hey man, f you. And I genuinely, <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about. And I have to like Google like Seth Rogen, <laughs> Pete Davidson joke. Like what? Like, like, and then I'm like, oh, I did say something one time. Like, like it, it's happened to me so many times that I assumed I had made some joke and I was gonna get yelled at. Yeah. And instead it was like, no, I want you to play uh, my uncle in this movie, which yeah, was that's, much, which was which much better. better. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, sure. <laughs> we, um, and, and we all, I also want to ask you about this show. Yeah. And I want, just, could you quickly explain Ooh. what, because it's very hard Challenge. to. Challenge, yeah. Just before we meet him, we're going to bring him out. His name's Paul T. Goldman. He yeah. is the victim, is that a correct, of, of a scam? Yes. He was uh, 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 scammed by a woman that he was dating, and he uh, wrote a, uh, a book about his experience, sort of a true crime novel, and he reached out to people on Twitter blindly, asking them if they wanted to adapt it, um, and uh, my friend Jason Wallner, who directed the Borat sequel, and me and my production company uh, got the book and decided to adapt it into um, a, a TV show, and Paul T. Goldman, uh, Plays himself. Decided to play himself in the adaptation. <laughs> he decided. Uh, and, uh, and what I just said, I understand, makes absolutely no sense yeah. in any way, shape, or it's form. It's going to make even less but sense as when we, we talk about it more. Yes, it will, we bring it, you Paul will be out. more confused. As this Seth Rogen is here. Paul T. Goldman is here. We'll be right back with Paul after this. We're we'll back with Seth Rogen, who is the producer of a uh, docuseries slash drama series called Paul T. Goldman. Yes. This is, um, as you explained, a man who got married to a woman very quickly. Yes. 
Turned out she was trying she was scamming him, scamming trying to steal him. his money, and perhaps a part of maybe a larger conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul wrote a book about his experience, and we adapted the book into a TV show with him. Uh, and he wrote the screenplay based on his own book and stars in the adaptation. Stars as himself. As himself. As a younger man. Uh, and yeah, exactly, over the years. Maybe um, we should take a look at a clip. Yeah. I have to tell you, Audrey, you're the first person I've met who looks exactly like their pictures. Is that okay? Is it okay? It's more than okay. It's great. Most women, they use their pictures from their high school yearbooks. Not me, Paul. Only my current picture. You'll find as you get to know me, honesty is so important. There he is, a man who risked it all for love. Please welcome Paul T. Goldman. Did Seth get any of your story wrong? Did he get it right? He got it right. He Can got I say right. one thing? Go ahead. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is probably must be a weird thing for you. First of all, reaching out on Twitter, which, you know, people do that kind of stuff all the time. Nothing ever comes from it. You happen to have the good sense to get Seth's attention. And then whose decision was it to cast you as the lead actor in this film playing yourself? Well, that's interesting. It happened during the auditions about mm -hmm. five years ago. They flew me out from Florida to do the auditions, to oversee the auditions. We were auditioning various actors and actresses, some to play Paul, some to play my ex-wife. And during the scenes, I was reading the part of Paul. Well, something interesting happened. During the scenes, I just got it into my head to get up, go over to the camera, and start talking to the audience. Mm -hmm. asking him, you know, things like, well, what do you think about what she just said? Things like that. Mm -hmm. well, I kept on doing that, and it seems like at the end of the day, everybody, they must have liked what I did. Because at the end of the auditions, they came to me and said, nobody could play Paul T. Goldman except Paul T. Goldman. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> Seth, is that, is that accurate? Did, did Paul actually win the part in that room, or were you guys thinking he would play the, himself the whole time? He wanted to play himself. He wanted yes. to play himself. <laughs> so, I see. So you had the, you That was a ruse, you going through the audition. Let's be clear, he wanted to play himself. <laughs> well, you know, it's one thing to be the author uh -huh. of the story. There's yeah. another thing whole other level to yeah. be actually starring in. And of course, you're playing a much younger version of yourself, so they basically spray paint your hair black. Yes, that's right. And you go on these dates, you have this crazy experience. I mean, how much of that story is? I know, you know some of the stuff has to be uh, adapted for television, but how much of this experience is true? It's all true. All except true. Except for a few scenes that I had to invent the dialogue for. Scenes that we were portraying that I wasn't there, or I was asleep. I like the word, I like the idea that you use the word invent the dialogue for, as if you've come up with a light bulb or something, where because this is, um, uh, the dialogue is plainly ridiculous throughout the, the <laughs> Thank you, yes. thank you. I'm and, not, <laughs> and the show documents the making of the show as well as the show itself, which it's is a big part of the show. So you get, so you actually see the casting process where Paul, um, decides that he would maybe be the best. That he would play himself, The yeah. whole series is like a huge solar system. At the center is my discovery of my ex-wife's secret double life. You knew her how long before you got married? Uh, we dated on and off for about a year. You got married part-time, that's how she described it. She exclaimed that she could only see me from Wednesdays to Saturdays. You were married from time, Wednesdays to Saturdays. <laughs> and, well, you, and, you, and you agreed to that. The rest of the time she said she was up, <laughs> she was up north. Don't worry, she had a very good story. Very good story. <laughs> she was up north caring for her 92-year-old Alzheimer's ridden grandmother. Now, I had known, had known good Jewish families that if the daughter was unemployed and you had a, uh, an elderly person, yeah. that could happen. Right, So I didn't yeah. question. Yeah, well, sure, who would ever want to go meet her grandmother when he's married to her? <laughs> Paul, now, I guess the question that most, probably most uh, um, of America is, is wondering is, are you single, are you available? <laughs> because... <laughs> 
I am still looking for the love of my life. Oh, you are? That's wonderful. I am. Now, people ask me all the time, did this experience with Audrey emotionally scar you and, and make you bitter, et cetera? And I say no for two reasons. One, such a short-term thing. We were only married as husband and wife 56 days. And two, I think the odds on meeting another con artist who's living a secret double life are pretty slim. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm open to meeting the love of my life. And therefore, girls, I'm available. Contact me. How Contact me on Twitter, at Paul Goldman. Send pictures. Oh. Tell me about yourself, and we'll go from there. That's you know, not... I understand Giselle Bunchen is... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, that's, right. that's, I don't know if you... That's literally going to make the same thing happen again. <laughs> That's the mess you got into. Well, then maybe there's a sequel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's no worse way to meet a woman than screaming, contact me on Twitter on a television show. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> well, we'll find out, I guess. That's right. Uh, it's a fascinating story. It is um, impossible to explain, it but is. well worth watching. It's called Paul T. Goldman. That's him, Paul T. Goldman. Seth Rogen, everybody. It's on Peacock now. We'll be back with Diego Calva.